שלום. היי, שרון, שרון, שרון אין בדיוק. Yeah, is this um, Kenneth? Yes, Kenneth speaking. Yeah, I'm supposed to talk to you at 11.30. Yes. Thank you for, thank you for giving me a call here. Um, I was just trying to get some last minute stuff set up here. Um, yeah, I was just, uh, um, I called and following your stuff online. And uh, thank you for putting that information out there, for one. Um, it really helps me out. I'm sure it helps uh, uh, people trying to make a difference and understand this information it makes a difference in their life as well so um, my purpose for calling was more so for um, looking for remedy for spousal support um, I recently had well I'm the tail end of a, of a nasty long long divorce and um, you know I've been listening to this information and And I don't really see much out there on on the uh, spousal support or alimony is another name for it and um got got beat up on that one pretty good uh got focused on my kids so the spout the the child support aspect of it is not really uh impacting me um, and she's living with her her um boyfriend uh I wasn't prepared for trial you know not understanding I represented myself I didn't have a lawyer in there um I wasn't comfortable. Um, using the uh, process yet that add around challenging the judge on the uh, jurisdiction of the court uh, because I'm kind of new you know fledgling you know uh, neophyte <laughs> with the information and I, I noticed that if I would have if I would have done something like that in court um, I probably would have gotten more more trouble you know some more adverse action from the judge because one you know <laughs> I'm sure he knows what's going on but uh You know he could have tripped me up a little bit you know I just wasn't prepared for what was going on so here I am in this situation now um, just trying to come from under the uh, spousal support uh, she's just taking it because she can and I really needed to, to you know for my for my youngsters um, so we're just trying to see is there um, remedy in place for uh, that type of situation okay um. Yeah, first of all, you know, giving all praises to, you know, God of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Um, I'll say this to you, right? As you know, if you watch several of my videos, this is not legal advice. Um, I can't offer you any kind of legal advice. If you need legal advice, you got to seek a competent counsel and then be advised. Everything that I give you is either based on what I've actually experienced myself or something that I may have guided others through, but I'm in no way suggesting that you actually do any of this. Now, right. when you say that no one on the internet um, has actually done anything on this, I beg to differ. Um, okay. Now, because if you're like, like most people, um, like ignorance, you know, ignorance don't mean you're stupid or something, it just means you simply do not know on contract law. Right. You think no one has done this, but I'll show you that I talk about it all the time. And the most important thing and element that I always emphasize in most videos is that you have to be able to comprehend and understand contract law. Because essentially, contract is law, and law is contract. So everything that we do, even your situation right now, You're referring to it as spousal support, but I can show you how that's a contract. The reason that's a contract, because when you and your soon-to-be ex-wife went down, either if you got married at a church, the church took over, you know, a marriage certificate to, you know, the courthouse, and then you created a trust with the court. If you went down to the justice of peace and got married, you created a trust with the court, which is a contract. And whenever there's a certificate involved, that means you give up true ownership and authority or title, and you're giving someone else title over you. So with a marriage certificate, when we go through like the court system, And so on and so forth what we do is we we create a three-way trust 
there's a, uh, there's a contract between you, your wife, and the state, whichever state that you're in. So you and your wife, you get what is known as equitable part of that contract. But the state gets legal part of the contract. So in the event of a divorce or if there's children involved and there is like a child custody issue, then the state will determine who gets what, who gets what property. So I'm not sure what state you're in, but one of those states like California, they will try to ravage the man if, you know, there is a divorce. Um, if the that's woman, right on, that's, 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 go that's ahead. where I am in California. I'm in California. Just, just to throw that in there. No, let, let me ask you this. Um, because my brother, he lives in California and you know, he's paying, you know, like 2,400 or something a month, you know, you know, yeah. he, he get one of those jobs that he's making like about a hundred thousand. He works for the federal government, by the way, but, um, He's, you know, undergoing a divorce out there, and he wouldn't listen to me. He went and got his own private attorney. I told him, no, don't do that. You're wasting money. Um, mm-hmm. Long story short, now he's paying like about 2600 between, um, you know, spousal support and child support a month, you know. So, um, you know, what it is, it, it's the contract. So, but for that to really be effective, in the state of California, their contract says if you've been with them for 10 years. So how long were you with this woman or soon to be ex-wife? Has it been 10 years? Uh, 22 years. Wow. And my, situa- my situation is the same. It's, uh, I work for the government. I'm in the military. Um, I did have a lawyer, but I, fi- I fired because, you know, I, I just, I, in the beginning, before I started looking um, and researching and stuff, uh, it was a situation where um, I noticed that, you know, there was no strategy going in and he would just beat me for money. You know, right. it's like a, we went to court one time and she was asking for the next payment of 2500 And I'm like, uh, you didn't do anything. And then uh, so that, that went sour and I didn't see the benefit from it. So I just decided to represent myself. And um, the, the, she did get me for, for $2,400, uh, $2,600, something like that. Yeah. Um, and I do work for the military, so it's a very similar situation, you know, if your brother's out here in California. Um, and the, 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 the judge made the divorce, although we still had uh, motions that we needed to file. Uh, my divorce was final, um, uh, as far as paperwork is concerned, uh, the 30 June of 2016. But we still had to go back to court, and I just went back on the 3rd of April and had to work um, uh, issues that were outstanding. Um, you know, div- division of property assets and things of that nature. And she's still in court now. We had to write a, um, uh, a five-page brief to the judge um, uh, last week, you know, just stating a, a point of law. They were trying to get me for $80,000, and I uh, had to state a point of law um, addressing statute uh, 1120, which is a fiduciary responsibility. And um, I just submitted that in. We had till 1 May to get that turned into the judge. So I'm just waiting on a decision from that. Who wrote that? Um, the judge told, uh, because uh, because um, her lawyer, she's a lawyer, was trying to um, get me for $80,000 on a point of law saying that I'm, I'm in, I'm in, neg- I'm in um, neglect of a fiduciary responsibility to her. Right. Um, uh, that I had to give her information in writing, you know, about the, the, the uh, disclosing, you know, what I was doing with, with that money. And um, I, I, I contended that I did let her know, but the, the, uh, the, the point that the lawyer was bringing out in this uh, section, the statute of law 1120 um, uh, said that I had to have it in writing. And the judge couldn't believe that, you know, uh, a married couple would have to put something in writing like that. So what he put on us was, uh, write him a five-page brief with your points on that particular statute, and so I just I had to, I had to, had to essentially write an essay to the judge. <laughs> I could have killed that in a couple sentences. Um, five-page brief is not necessary. First of all, brother, this is why it's essential. You're gonna have to get yourself a good book. When are you scheduled to go back to court? 
Um, I'm not scheduled to go back to court. I just submitted the brief uh, on one May. Um, I waited to one May because I didn't want so to. So uh, the judge, the you're not scheduled to go back to court. So is the judge going to make a final determination based on your brief? Yes. Yeah, that's not a good look. That's not a good look. They, they, they you know, they, uh, they're almost ravaging you. First of all, anytime anyone tell you to do anything, if you understand contract law, that's an offer. You can conditionally, um, you know, accept that offer. See, instead of doing it, I would have conditionally accept that offer. Well, I conditionally accept your offer upon proof of claim that you show me where I actually agreed to any of the things um, stated in that particular statute that I would have cited that statute. Now, here is where the trickery and buffoonery comes in. Although the marriage certificate is a contract, there's also a thing known as full disclosure. So if it was not fully disclosed to me in that marital contract, when I signed that contract, that you could try and use this particular statue over here that really doesn't even apply to me to say that I have to put in writing so-and-so, then that's known as an adhesion contract or a hidden contract. So I'm not responsible for something that's not totally revealed in a contract. And if you had an attorney or lawyer that was representing you, you know, to win, then he would have made that very clear. He could have clearly argued that point. You know, this was an adhesion contract. I wasn't aware of it. Therefore, there was not full disclosure. Therefore, this contract is not valid. You understand what I'm saying? I would have made that point very crystal clear right there. You can't, if they try and use that ignorance of the law, there's no excuse. But hey, the contract is null and void because it was not full disclosure. See, for a contract to be, you know, valid, there has to be a meeting of the minds. That means both people have to be competent enough to understand what's going on. There has to be full disclosure, and you have to be the legal age of majority. I mean, you can't be a minor. You, know, you got to be in the same mind and all of that. But if I'm signing a marriage contract, and I don't know way over here, some lawyer is going to try and go and dig up some old statue, some California statue that don't apply to me, because statues don't apply to me. Um, now, they, uh, they apply to you. Because like my brother, you work for the federal government. So you can't say I'm not under your jurisdiction or something like that. Like you can't argue that because you are under that jurisdiction because you are a federal employee. But on the flip side of that, I'm not responsible for something that's not fully revealed to me. So that, that should have been what you argue. Like we don't get an argument because argue is Latin. And a lot of stuff that's used in law it's Latin. That's pretty much where they get their wars and their legal leads from. Argue is Latin to make clear. But argument is when you go in dishonor. That's what attorneys do. They argue back and forth and they use words of art to confuse you. Like he's using that statue to confuse you. And the word that he worded it, you know, if I was a novice in this, I probably would have done the same thing because he worded it in a way that makes you think that you had to do that. And so... Anytime anyone say anything to you, even a black robe, if the um, judge is saying something to me, is that an order? You know, are you giving me an order? And then show me the law. Show me the law that states this. And if they're showing me a statue, that's exactly what that is. That's a statue, but that's not law. But again, that would apply to you since you're a federal employee. Because statutes, codes, rules, regulations apply to those and the people that actually create them or the people that actually work for them. But still, right. since there was not full disclosure, then I'm not obligated to that. I would have just killed that. And, and I'll tell you something, brother. Whenever someone is asking you to write a five-page um, essay or something like that, explaining something, they know the more that you talk, the more that you're going to jam yourself up. That The worst thing that you could do in a, a public venue referred to as a court as a talk a lot, the less you say, the better off you are. So he asked me to write something like that. Um, for the record, um, my honor is um, that an order? Well, if that's an order, okay, well then show me the law. And then if I write something, who's to say it would actually take five page for me to explain and something I could um, explain in a paragraph. You see what I'm saying? Right. 
that that's right. setting you up for a trap because they're going to take those words and use them against you because the way that we've actually been taught to speak in common parlance is not the way things are in law. It, they just simply don't mean the same because law is actually written in legalese. But we've taught right. to speak in common parlance in school, so it doesn't, you know, it don't add up. So, you know, now it seems like almost like you've actually left your fate in the hands of the black robe, which is just really not a good look. Um, and in the state of California, it's one of those states that they have a tendency to lean towards the um, woman. Now, I will say this to you. Let's say we've got to um, approach this from a statutory um, perspective. Like, what I would have put in that letter is that, you know, you say your um, children are with you, right? Right. I got yeah. full custody. So if your children are with you and, you know, did, she, did your um, wife work while she was with you? No, she's claiming she didn't work part time. Um, is what is what she's claiming. Yeah. So, but did she work for? I mean, for um, when she was with you, did she work, or was she just simply a housewife? Uh, it's documented that she was a housewife. I mean, right. She had businesses and things of that nature, but but for the court purposes, it was until until 2010, uh, throughout the 22 year marriage, which started back in '93, she was basically a housewife. All right. So. The argument that the opposing party is making that she's accustomed to a certain lifestyle. That's the argument right. that they're going to try and make, or if they're not have actually already made it. And so he's, when he's saying that the word fiduciary duty, he's essentially just saying that you have the responsibility to look out for your wife's best interests. That's all he's really saying. And so in doing so, she deserves like, a large quantity of your um, retirement and so on and so forth. So, um, right. yeah, I mean, that's, a bit, that's the argument that he's presenting. So, you know, at the same time, um, whatever, like, led to the divorce, those are the factors that I would actually um, lean towards. Now, how old are your um, sons or daughters? Or are they still considered to be minors or are they adults now? Well, I have six of them. Three of them are considered um, adults and three are minors. All right. So that is the um, grounds that I and your attorney should have used. If you have three children, they're still minors, then I would, you know, emphasize that my primary responsibility is to my minor children. and the courts, have, for whatever reason, has actually already determined that they're better off with you. What was the reason for them determining that? Did she just give up custody? Yeah, she just gave up custody. Okay, so, brother, that's what you should have actually keyed in on. She doesn't seem to be that interested in, you know, the children. She, what mother gives up, you know. I understand at one time this may have actually been a good marriage, but in court... You know, it's a war, pretty much. It's a right. battle. So it is in your best interest to try and make her look as if she had no interest in her children. So she just gave up custody to you. So um, I don't feel as if, you know, um, I owe her this fiduciary duty um, of giving her X amount of dollars and so on and so forth because my primary responsibility is now to my um, minor children which she actually gave up. You, you got to make her not really look that credible, you know, in the court. Because, I mean, right, she, right now she's not really caring um, about you. She just wants to get as much money as she can. And trust me, they will try and take as much as they possibly can take from you. You know, right, uh, she is right, right now it's at uh, 2400 and with this money that she's saying she had no uh, idea about what she did because I had weekly meetings about the topic despite uh, what was going on. I just I just chose to handle it as a business. And, you know, in business, you're not going to be friends with everybody. So um, I just treated it as a business, although we were on the verge of divorce. And so I made sure that I disclosed what was going on. So for her to say she wasn't aware it was false. And also, um, 
uh, I tried to settle outside of the court with a lawyer, and a lawyer came back with a settlement agreement saying uh, uh, what was acceptable would be $6,500 a month. And I was like, you must have lost your brain. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, well, uh, um, yeah. Hey, hey, hey brother, um, she, um, since the divorce is, you know, pretty much almost finalized, so basically the divorce was actually already finalized, and you, you've right. already had, you know, a set amount on the books that you was actually scheduled to pay. Right. Right. So now what they're trying to do is actually amend this contract. And the only way um, they could actually amend that contract is if you agree. So, you know, you, you actually, you know, um, writing that letter is giving consent. You know, telling me what you're telling me now, all you have to say is, no, I object. I, I, I do not agree. Um, we have a contract here. Now, you can still try and make this argument, but you've already um, sent something in. You know, contracts could actually be honored in several different ways. Um, you could do them in writing. You could do them orally with your mouth, or they could be implied by your actions. So now that you've actually agreed to send in this five-page essay, it's almost as if you've consented to, okay, yeah, well, let's amend this contract because what are you doing? You're arguing. And when you argue, you go in dishonor. So the thing that you should have done when they came back to you with this nonsense, I object. Um, we already have a contract here. Um, you know, you don't want to proceed with it. Any. So show me a law where, you know, I have to actually enter into another contract with you. So, you know, based on the, um, what the um, judge is trying to do here, um, the only thing that I could possibly see that you may have a chance with is if he say, well, yeah, let's go ahead and prove. Because the chances are, I'll be honest with you, he's going to try to prove that because all this is actually in cahoots. Like the attorneys get paid, the judges get paid, yeah. The courts get paid. So it's in his best interest um, because the more money they could get from you, that means they will actually get pay, paid again for her going to trial again. So the more times that this goes to court, it's better off for the attorneys because the attorney gets paid every time he goes to court. There's a court fee every time you go to court and so on and so forth. So um, the best thing or the only chance that I really foresee in this since you don't know contract law of me, I would like just fight it to the end. But um, if the judge tries to approve that, I would immediately issue an order to overturn the judge's decision and then state that we already had a contract in place. Um, show me the law that states that um, you can actually amend this contract without my consent. Now, he may say you already gave consent when you wrote this essay and so on and so forth. But, um, you know, you know, you may have a chance of saying that um, the um, the the essay that I wrote, um, I you know actually um, seek a different counsel. He gave me um, some different information, and I would like to um, amend the previous um, essay that I sent then. And then you write something very short stating that um, we already had a contract in place. Um, I, my primary fiduciary duty is to my minor children and so on and so forth and tell her to, um, show cause why I would actually have to pay her anything extra when she was aware of this. You see the burden of proof brother is always on the planet. It's not your responsibility to prove, um, that she didn't know she's the one that's complaining. She's bringing a complaint against you saying that she didn't know. So it's her responsibility to be able to prove that. If she can't prove it, I would just remain moat. So I would actually say, well, sure, prove it. Prove it. You have to prove that you didn't have knowledge of this. And so in other words, if she can't prove it, it's your word against hers. So she I, has I did nothing. capture that. I did capture that in my letter. Of that point that you're talking about and it came down to this you know I, I mean I had my birth certificate in the court I was ready to pull it out but I was shaking like a leaf man so I couldn't I didn't I you know the confidence wasn't there to be able to do no, it. no but you've done the but, right uh, thing <laughs> you're not to interrupt you brother you've done the right thing not to do that because what I'm saying yeah. to you because you work for the federal government <clears throat> right they do have jurisdiction over you 
Same thing I told my brother. They do have jurisdiction because you actually work for the federal government. You are a federal employee. Understand that. So uh, I'm doing retired here. I'm trying to come from under that because uh, I hear the secure part of the uh, credit information that you talk about, and I'm trying to come from under that to um, get out of that debtor status. And um, uh, the military, I'm under contract with the military uh, as well. So, you know, it's, they're not letting me go so easy. But I am trying to come from under that. And, um, so are you, uh, are you, are you um, like a DA civilian like my brother, or you're actually still in the service? I'm actually a military service person oh, okay. connected to the Air Force. Oh, all um, right. So, and I'm on active duty, and I retire actually in November. And even though I retire in November in a few months, uh, this November 2017, I'm still trying to come from under that contract um, because I, you know, I do, I do understand that I work for the government and I'm connected uh, in that way. But this judge, what he did was he ruled, um, he ruled. Um, the, the current contract, he did make adjustments to it, and the adjustments were to my favor. So he, he ruled, he, he adjusted the um, the alimony or spousal support to, he reduced it to $1,300. Mm -hmm. um, and then, because they garnished my wages, they would take, they, they're still taking the 2000 plus out of my, out of my check, monthly, monthly wages. So, um, uh, you know, I don't even have a, a, a dog in, a dog in that fight. But he, what he did was, so I wasn't paying, so I had an arrears, and um, we had bills that we accumulated together that was community property that the judge also ruled that any bills that I pay that were considered community property, have it be reduced, have it reduced the arrears amount by her half. Right. Um, and then and have to give her a percentage, not 50% percentage uh, of my retirement based on a, uh, an outside agency that, that we um, agreed upon to give her a percentage of, of uh, retirement come November. So it wasn't, you know, it reduced the bleeding. It, it, did, it didn't hurt so bad because um, he, he brought the numbers down some. And then the only point uh, that remained was my bank accounts where she was trying to uh, uh, get um, a percentage of that. And that was that was the only point that was remaining where she pulled, where her lawyer pulled out the um, uh, statute with this fiduciary responsibility. Um, what I found in my research when I was looking at, at that, she, 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 she uh, pulled out of the statute stuff that would make her, her client look good, you know, my ex-wife look good. But if you look at it in its entirety and follow the, um, the other sub, sub statutes that are under the it's supposed to be set up. Fiduciary responsibility doesn't just fall on me. It falls on both of us. So she yep. has a fiduciary responsibility as well. Right. That's right. That's right. But I mean, it, it was your um, responsibility or your attorney's responsibility to argue that. Um, and, and not only that, again, um, you both have a fiduciary responsibility for your children. You know, and, and since the minor children are with you, um, you cannot afford to pay, you know, these additional amounts that they're asking because your concentration is, you know, towards your children's future and possibly sending them to college. So the amount that they're actually requesting from you, um, you, you just can't entertain. You can't entertain. But that fiduciary duty is a mutual responsibility. And so who filed for the divorce, you or her? She did. Okay. So when she filed for the, the divorce, you know, um, she pretty much abandoned her, um, I don't know why she filed for the divorce, but if she just simply filed for a no, no fault divorce, then she's actually abandoned her fiduciary duty. And if she's left her children, then if that was pushed right, that would make her seem as a unfit mother. You know, um, I, I just don't think this was actually entered right into the records because you yeah, got California, because you got California custody. Uh, I'm California's sorry. a no-fault state. California's a no-fault state, so it doesn't matter. They, they didn't even entertain that, you know, um, what, what, what the reasons were. Right, right, um, right. But that, that's, that's different. It, it doesn't matter. So that's my point in general. Still, just because she filed for divorce, you don't care why she filed. That's not the point that I'm making. The point that I'm making is she had a fiduciary duty to your and her children. She aborted that duty 
when she left the marriage and you actually ended up with the um, children. So her entitlement should actually pretty much go to the children. I will word that in such a way. Okay. I did capture, I, I'm pleased to hear you saying that because I captured a lot of that in that five page brief that I wrote. Um, so I was going on track with that. What I was trying to do was come up from under all of this. You know, um, I don't know um, if there's something like an injunctive release would, 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 would assist in this. I just wanted to stop paying her because she lives with a boyfriend and, um, and that she's just taking money from me because she can. I have the, 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 um, the, the child custody and, um, you know, California has this thing in place where the spouse has, is entitled to a life uh, you know, the same kind of light as far as our income is concerned when well, she was with you. So you got to give her, you know, a portion of your income to, to, to level that out. And I'm like, you know, well, you know, you're in the court lying uh, under oath, you know, when, you know, I asked her if she's staying with, a, with, with her, with her man, no problem with that. But if y'all are living, you know, leave me alone, you know, give, give my money back and let me do what I do, you know, on this side, taking care of uh, our kids. And, and don't just pull that, don't pull that string of income from me. So I was just trying to see what I can do to come from under everything, you know, not having to pay her spousal support at all, even though it was an order out there to pay spousal support. Right. So, uh, you know, honestly, brother, as long as you are a federal employee, their statutes, codes, laws, rules, regulations applies directly to you. Again. Okay. Those statutes, codes, and all, they apply to the people that create them and their franchisees or their corporations or their employees. Okay. So, I mean, the only, the only, your only way to argue this is through their statutes and find loopholes in their statutes because you, you, you can't um, be totally a creditor and say, I'm not under your jurisdiction, and then receive governmental benefits. Right. That's, that's a conflict of interest. Okay. That's because, I mean, that, and then that, you know, you see what I'm saying? That will actually make you a fraud because you'll be, uh, I'm, and I'm glad you didn't pull out the birth certificate because you have been saying, hey, well, this is not me, but hey, you're a federal employee. Do you work for the federal right. government? Do you have a zip code? Right. So on and so forth, you know? Yes. <laughs> so in retirement, does that still apply to me? Because I'll still be receiving a benefit, um, uh, a monthly um, retirement check from them. That I'm well, I mean that that's not you know um, that's not something that will actually affect you directly. And the reason I say that is the only time you need to actually really go into a creditor status is you know if you are faced with some sort of presentment. Otherwise, you know, you live your life um, normally, like you operate in commerce when you need to. So in other words, if I, you know, um, and, and in the status of a man, which is actually the highest status, if I want to be a 14 Amendment citizen, say if I'm filing a civil lawsuit, then I could choose to do that. You understand? Um, so, but if I don't, if someone's bringing something against me and I want to be in a creditor status, then no, I'm not, you know, I'm not under your jurisdiction now. But if I want to bring a civil lawsuit, then I could be under that jurisdiction because it's working out in my favor. That's how right. it sort of like works. So you kind of like change your color like a chameleon, like when it works right. in your favor because you're the creditor, you know? Right. So that's what I'm looking forward to, man. Just, um, uh, well, I would like to look forward to that, to be able to, to well, you, what you're saying is I need to operate within the system uh, currently. Um, right. And if, what I think I hear you saying that when, once I retire, I right. have to come from under that. And, right. And, uh, I mean, I used to be in the military. I used to be in the military. Yeah. I used to be in yeah, special man, ops. Oh, man, so you, you, you were up there with, the, with all the secret stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I wish... I wish that I had this information because I'm 32 years into the military now, and I wish uh, uh, wow. I was studying. It's all it's all hindsight, you know. It's all hindsight. Um, right. But I, I have this information now, and I'm trying to make those corrections as, as I need to be to, to the point where 
I'm willing to, after 32 years of service, willing to just let it go um, uh, to become, you know, um, uh, to be able to exercise my rights and the things that the things that I need to things that I would like to exercise as far as creditor status and things of that nature. Um, you know, I don't know if you, if uh, accepted for value those things that you talk about for uh, accepted for value work in my current status. Um, no, they won't. You know, they won't because you're actually part of the um, the de facto. Right. What they refer to as you know um, government, but I believe. It's more of a de facto now, existed in fact, right. but not legally established. Right. Because if the government was proceeding according to the Constitution that's actually on the um, the books or the um, organic Constitution of 1789, then the trial that you actually just went through would actually have to be a trial by jury. And the reason I say that, according to the Bill of Rights, Article 6, if it's a criminal offense, you're entitled to a trial by jury. According to Article 7 in the Bill of Rights, if you're going to court, even if it's a civil defense, if it's above $20, you're entitled to a trial by jury. With that being said, where is the jury in your trial? They'll tell you, oh, you're not entitled to a um, jury. Um, this is um, domestic. This is a family court. But no, the Bill of Rights says if it's above $20, I'm entitled to a trial by jury. So where's your jury? It's an illegal court. It's a maritime admiralty court, and it's all about commerce. It's all about how much money they could get from you. That's what it's all about. I hate to say it that way, but it's true. Yeah. No, I agree, man. I'm studying really hard, man, and, and I'm pretty excited to get on that side of it. So um, definitely look forward to connecting with you more in the future, you know, and just learning um, uh, learning from you. Yeah. And I, I know it gets busy, <laughs> yeah. you know. Uh, and nothing's free, you know, and there's a there's a fee associated with it. You know, like I often hear you say the the quid pro quo. <laughs> right. So right. That's why I know so something for something. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, but right, brother, I, I I hate to tell you, man, the very government that um you know we you know we go out and fight and think we're actually pretend you know defending it and so on and so forth. That same government is warring against the very constitution that we supposed to be defending and protecting because yeah. when you start infringing on my rights then you're warring against the constitution yeah yes man that's a sour taste in my mouth man for 32 years i've been i've been fooled i've had no pulled over my eyes so you know um i'm studying <laughs> yeah. i'm studying and uh, hopefully in the future I can uh, uh, come from come from under that, and um, you know not o not only learn from you but share with people, um, or guide guide people to you, or, or be able to teach people about you know what's really going on type thing. So, all right. So, w which part of California are you in? My brother's in Northern California. I'm in Northern California. I'm about uh, an hour out from. Uh, uh, San Francisco, Monterey. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's the area he's in. He's about, he's about um, I think like thirty. Um, he mentioned that Monterey. I never went out there to visit him yet. Um, but yeah, he mentioned that uh, he pretty much been in California most of his life after he graduated yeah. from school. I stayed on the East Coast. I tried to move out there once. I had moved to Vegas for about four years. He talked me into moving to Vegas when he was there. But as soon as I got there, he he left. You know, <laughs> then came back at that left. So I, I went back to New York. Then he ended up back in California. But yeah, it seems yeah, like he's family, pretty close to you. My family's from New York. I'm just out here for the military. You know, uh, I'm, right. yeah, I'm originally from New York and my family's from New York. And uh, um, I'm just out here looking forward to get back there in November. So I'm, I'm not saying there. it's a nice place to visit, but uh, <laughs> I got to get back to the East. Right, right. Yeah. But okay. You know, uh, hopefully that you know that'll work out in your favor. Oh, you know, hopefully you know the judge or the black rule will be a little more lenient, you know, and, and just yeah. leave things the way that they are. Yeah, yeah. Well, at least it's nice to know where I stand and and the work that I need to do to to overcome it. So um, definitely appreciate it, and uh, look forward to uh, talking with you more in the future. All right, all right. Be safe. Be safe out there. All right, thank you. You too. All right, all right. All right. Sure.